Hey guys, so it's been a while since I made a video. I've been moving around and busy with work and doing some other things, but somebody left a comment on one of my other videos about making games, and I thought it sounded like a fun idea. So in this video, I'm going to start making a game. I think I'm going to go ahead and put it live on a website. Um, so I've got a website at alascode.com. I'll put the link in the below the video uh, so you can actually go on and mess around with the game a little bit. Um, all right, so let's get started and let me show you what I have so far. So this is the HTML page. Uh, as you see, it's pretty basic. Um, we've got the title. I went ahead and threw the style in here so I didn't have to create a, a CSS page for this. Um, and then I've got two images. Uh, the images are style display none. And um, then I create a canvas with width 750 and height 600. And I'm going to run the script gamecode.js, which is this JavaScript file which has nothing in it. That's what I'm going to be making in this video. These two uh, image, image files right here, this uh, spritesheet.png and graphics.png are exactly what they say. So let me go into the file and show you. Um, here's our uh, game.html. It's going to be running in this window right here. Uh, right now it doesn't do anything except for you can see the canvas is in this uh, light gray box. And the res, res is for resources. So in this folder, I put the graphics and the sprite sheet. Uh, these are cheesy things that I drew in paint. Um, they're actually for another game that's on Steam Greenlight. Um, maybe I'll remake that game here. So this is just a bunch of stuff. Uh, down here in the bottom right corner is for the map graphics. And this is our sprite sheet. Um, here you can see the sprite characters. So we'll probably refer to this again once we get to drawing uh, the walking animations for the sprites. So you could download your own sprite sheet uh, from online, or you could draw your own like I did. Um, it took quite a while to draw. I did not draw the sprite sheet for the video. It's for that other game that I made. So, All right, well, let's get into it. First things first, um, the whole game is going to be drawn in this canvas. So we need to reference that canvas from our code. So over here, I'm going to write uh, ver canvas equals document dot get element by ID. Uh, I think it was just called my canvas. OK, so that was the ID was my canvas. And now this variable is referencing that. To draw in the canvas, we need to get the context. So uh, we're going to create a var, which I'll call ctx, which equals canvas.getContext. And we were going to put in 2D inside of here. Oops, sorry, it's a lowercase d. OK, so we have the canvas now. And we also want to grab these graphics. Uh, you could actually grab the image inside of the code. I just decided to do it this way. I don't know if one is necessarily more efficient than the other. Um, so I have uh, an image with the sprite sheet with the ID of sprites and an image with the graphics with an ID of graphics. We also want to reference those inside of the code. So here I'm going to create a variable ver sprite sheet equals document dot get element by ID sprites, if I can spell that right, and variable graphics equals document dot get element by ID graphics. Okay, and the way our game's gonna run is by running a loop. So 
I want to do is create a function called loop that I'm going to run over and over again. And it's going to do two things. It's going to draw and it's going to update. So we're going to create a draw function which draws the graphics and an update function which updates all the variables in the game. And uh, what we want to do is run this over and over again. So uh, we want to create this very, uh, we want to call this function set interval. And what this is going to do is it's going to set an interval of time uh, on which it's going to run this function. So we're going to run the function loop and we're going to run it every 10 milliseconds. Okay, so what we need to do now is create the functions draw and update. Okay, so whenever we run draw, we're going to want to first clear off whatever was on the screen. So um, that's the first thing we're going to do is ctx.clear rect. So that means clear a rectangle, and we're going to clear everything. So 0, 0, canvas.width, canvas.height. And that gives us a fresh new canvas. And uh, first thing we're going to do is draw the map. So next thing we're going to do is uh, create a function for drawing the map. So down here we're going to do function draw map. And this is going to be a tile-based game. So let's create uh, an array of tiles on which we're going to draw the map. So up here at the top is where I like to create all my variables. I'm going to create a variable tiles, which is equal to an array. And then we're going to run this for loop for variable i equals 0. i is less than 4 plus canvas.width over 20 i plus plus. OK, so our tiles are going to be 20 pixels by 20 pixels. And that's why I'm taking the width and dividing it by 20, because uh, I'm going to fill up the whole canvas and that many tiles. The plus 4, um, that'll come in later. So uh, we don't want to just cover up the canvas. We want to cover it up plus a little bit extra. So I'm throwing the 4 on there so that it, um, we cover a little bit more than the whole canvas. And then uh, these are going to be, let's see, so that's the width, these are going to be the columns. And so for variable j, oh, uh, sorry, we want to make each one of these an array. So tiles at i is going to equal an array. And then for variable j equals 0, j is less than 4 plus canvas dot height over 20, j plus plus. Same idea. So we're doing 20 by 20 tiles. And so we can divide the height up by 20. And then writing four extra tiles just to cover up a little bit extra on the top and bottom. And now we're going to put this as a tiles ij is equal to, uh, we're going to create a tile object. So uh, tile x 59. Oops, and tile y, 57. Uh, I picked 59 and 57 because on the sheet that I'm using, it ends up being a little bush. So let's go back to the graphics and see what I'm talking about here. Um, so each of these squares in this graphics are 20 pixels by 20 pixels. I've measured that out. I guess you can see it here if I grab one. This is 19 by 19, but they're, they're 20 by 20. 
And so all the graphics have been drawn into these 20 by 20 squares. And I'm grabbing, let's see, oh, here we go. I'm grabbing this little bush down here. So I'm going to draw that bush over and over again on the background. And that bush is in position uh, over, going over 59 of these tiles and then down 57 tiles. So if you wanted to use different sizes, you could just divide by whatever size uh, that you want to use. And then this, instead of 59, 57, is whatever location you want to grab. Later we'll get into drawing maps, but for right now we're just going to repeat a single tile. Maybe I'll play with it a little bit and draw two different or three different kinds of tiles in the background. Um, we'll do that later. So the next thing we want to do is actually draw the tiles. So let's go into the draw map. And we want to loop through all the tiles. So for variable i equals zero, i is less than tiles dot length i plus plus, and then for variable j equals zero, j is less than tiles, they're all the same length arrays, so I'm just gonna use tiles at zero dot length, j plus plus. So remember, uh, this tiles is an, an array itself, um, which has a length of canvas width over 20 plus four, but then tiles at zero is an array, because at each i we created a new array, and that, those arrays have length canvas.height over 20 plus four. So this inner one's running over canvas.height over 20 plus four. Okay, now what do we wanna do? We wanna draw something from our graphics sheet to the canvas. And so we called the graphics sheet graphics and that was document I get element by ID graphics. Um, if you remember in our HTML, that's actually just the image, uh, which I went source equals res slash graphics.png. Okay, so the way we do that is we use the context, ctx. Remember I said ctx is used to draw to the canvas. And we're going to do ctx.draw image. And what we're going to do, um, since it's the context for canvas, it already knows it's drawing to the canvas, but we do have to tell it uh, which file that it's drawing from. So we're going to draw the image from graphics, and we don't want to draw the whole image. So what we're going to do is tell it how much of the image we want to draw and where. So what we want to do is draw 20 times tiles at ij. So remember, um, oh, dot tile x. I divided, uh, sorry, so remember that I divided by 20. Uh, now I want to multiply by 20 because I'm going to go over 20 times the number of tiles. And I said tile 59 um, is the one that we want. So each one has a width of 20, so we're going to go over by 59 times 20. And then we also want to do 20 times tiles at ij dot tile y. So this is our x-coordinate that we're starting at, and this is our y-coordinate that we're starting at. And what that's going to do is go over to 59 times 20, and so we're just gonna go over to this, this point right here, and then 57 times 20 is gonna go down to, oops. Uh, it's gonna go down to this bush that we're going to draw over and over again, so. Uh, that's just going down 57 tiles, each one is 20, so 57 times 20 goes down 57. Okay. Okay, now we have to tell how much we want to copy. And of course we want to copy one tile, so that has width 20 and height 20. And then we need to tell what we're going to copy it to. And so we're gonna go over 20 times i, 20 times j. So this is where we are at in the canvas. Um, 
And we're going to start with ij is 0, 0, so that's the upper left corner. And then as i and j loop through these tiles, it's actually putting tiles down on the canvas, uh, going over 20 um, i and going down 20 j. And then how much do we want this to fill up in the canvas? Well, we want it to fill up as a 20 by 20 square. So this is where we are copying from in the graphic sheet, and this is how much we're copying. So we're going to copy from tile uh, 5957, and we're going to grab a 20 by 20 tile. And then the second coordinates are where we're copying two. So we're going to copy two 20i and 20j, and we're going to copy two a 20 by 20 tile. OK, so let's see what that looks like. It should show up now. Of course, that never works. Um, Okay, so uh, the first time I tried that, it didn't work, and then when I tried it again and refreshed the page, it did work. Um, I can't tell you exactly why that happened, but uh, so there you go. We're drawing that bush over and over again on all the tiles, and it covers the whole uh, the whole canvas. Okay, so we can draw a background, and that's a pretty important step, is just being able to draw from one image onto the context, or the canvas itself. So next we want to draw characters. Okay, the first step of this should be pretty easy. So let's do a draw the player. No. And so we need to create a draw player function. And we're just going to do the same thing that we did to draw the map. I'm going to do ctx dot draw image. And now we want to draw from the sprite sheet. And we have to decide what we want to draw. Here's our sprites. I'm going to draw this first character up here. This guy in uh, this robe. Um, I want to draw this one who's facing forward and standing still. So these characters are 40, uh, 40 by 60, uh, 40 across and 60 tall. So I'm going to have to go over, this is at 0, 40, 80, and then down 0. So we're going to go from the point 40 and then down 0. And then I want to copy, he's uh, 40 across and 60 down. Okay, and I want to copy this to uh, the center of the canvas. I'm just going to put him right in the middle of the screen. So I'm going to take uh, canvas.width over 2. And since he's 40 across, to put him in the middle, I'm going to subtract half of that, so minus 20. That way 20 of him is on the left side and 20 is on the right side. And then we're going to do canvas.height over 2. And now he's 60 tall, so I'm going to do minus 30. And that will put the top 30 half of him at the top of the screen and the bottom 30 half on the bottom of the screen. And this is going to be 40 and 60. So let's see if he shows up whenever I hit refresh. There he is. Uh, he's got his right foot forward for some reason. I'm drawing this one. Oh, I only went over 40. I should have gone over 80. Uh, so this was 0, 40, and then 80. So there he is, uh, standing still and looking at us. Great. Well, we have a player on the screen, but now we want him to do something. Actually, uh, let's do something simple before we make him start walking around. 
Um, next thing I'm going to do is add a character type variable. So we're going to go variable care type equals zero. And whenever we draw our character, uh, we're going to go over 80 and then down 60 times care type. Why 60? Uh, remember I told you these characters are 60 tall. So this is character 0, and now this will be character 1, character 2, character 3, and so on. Okay, so refresh, I didn't screw anything up so that it doesn't stop, uh, doesn't run. And now I can change that variable character type. Um, if I change this to 6, for example, what do we get? I get a bunch of boxes because I went too far. Let's try 5. Now we get this cool samurai looking dude. Okay. Next thing we want to do is move the screen around whenever we press the arrows. So what we want to do next is add an event listener so that the, the computer is listening for whenever we press the keys up and down. So we're going to go to document.add event listener. Uh, and we're going to have a key down. And we need to tell it what function to run whenever we press a key down. So we're going to do a key down handler. And then document.add event listener um, key up. So what you do whenever you pick up your key, and then that's going to be the key up handler, and we're going to set the third parameters to false. And we need to create these functions. So what does key down handler and key up handler do? So let's do function key down handler, and e is the event that happens. So uh, whenever we press the keys, it's going to give us a code. Um, I think these are just the ASCII code values. And so we're going to compare to see if uh, the user is pressing the arrow keys or not. So what we're going to do is create some variables to store whether or not the player is pressing these uh, keys down. So we're going to have right pressed equals false, uh, let's do right, left, up, and down. Okay, so we're going to start off assuming that the player is not pressing anything, and if uh, e.keycode equals 39, that means they are pressing down right. So right pressed equals true. Tour, whichever you prefer. If e dot key code equals 37, that means left pressed equals true. If e dot key code equals 38, and that means up pressed is true. And finally, if e.keycode is 40, then down pressed is true. Okay, so that listens for whether the player is pressing right, left, up, or down. Um, but it never goes back to false. And we don't want it to stay true forever just because the player presses right once. So uh, we also need to do this key up handler. Key up handler, and it's going to do the exact same thing except for it turns all the variables to false. So if you let go of, for example, the up key, it's you're no longer pressing it.
And so that's what happens whenever you uh, you let go or key the key is up. Okay, now that we have done that, we want to update how we're drawing the map. So I'm going to have the character stay in the center of the screen, and I'm going to have the map move around in the background. Okay, and the way that we're going to do this is to create some offset uh, on the x and y for where the map is. So we're going to make a variable offset of x is, we're going to start with minus 40, and the variable offset of y equals minus 40. So that's a couple of tiles. Remember that I added four extra tiles to the rows and columns, and they're 20 by 20, so we're centering the map. It's going to be offset back to and up to by setting it off um, negative 40 and negative 40 and let's change where we copy this map to um, draw map so remember we're drawing this tile uh, tile what was it 59 57 which is 20 by 20 and we're drawing it to 20 times i plus 20 times j but instead of that we're going to do 20 times i plus the offset on x and 20 times j plus the offset on y Okay, let's go to the update function finally. So all we've been doing is drawing so far, but now we're going to update variables based on the player's input. So uh, we want to do something if they're pressing one of these keys, for example, right pressed. If right pressed is true, which means the player is pressing it, we're going to take offset x and go minus minus. So they're pressing right, we want the screen behind the player to shift left. And then we do something similar for each of these keys. So if it's left pressed, we're going to do offset x plus plus. If it is up pressed, we want to do offset y, and this one's going to be plus plus, because plus plus is going to make the screen shift down. Remember that uh, down is the positive um, on a computer screen. And then if we're pressing down, we want the screen to shift up. So uh, down is going to be minus minus. So let's see if that works. Hey, there we go, the background. Uh, we can go off the background. <laughs> um, notice you can press like up and left at the same time and move around diagonally. So there you go. Now we've got a player that can move around the map. Uh, he looks kind of stiff right now but we can change that by adding a little bit of animation on our sprites. So that's probably the last thing I'm going to do. I'll try to animate this guy and then we'll stop there. Um, that'll be a little bit trickier. So let's put character type 0. Like I said, I, I drew some of these. I had a student that actually drew some of these too when, back when I was a professor. I think his animations look better than mine. So um, let's go with the first guy because that looks better than what I got. Okay, to animate this guy, we want to create three variables. The first one is going to be called play, player face or play face, um, and we're going to start that at two. Uh, so two will be pointing down. And then we're going to have a variable which is a timer, which will equal zero, uh, which will time the animations and vari variable animate, which equals zero.
Okay, so we have a direction that the player is facing. Uh, that's what this play face is. The animate is going to be uh, where he's animated in his steps. Um, so for example, he's facing down here, and that's going to be animate 2. Uh, the reason it's 2 is it starts 0, 1, 2. We want him to start uh, facing forward. And the animate variable is going to determine whether we're drawing the first, the second, or the third part of the animation. And all that animation is going to be based on a timer. So we have the timer that tells us uh, which animation to draw, the animate, which is the first, second, or third uh, image here of him stepping, and then the direction that he's facing. Okay, so as we run through update, uh, actually let's do this uh, and draw. Um, so since we're animating something, every time we draw, we're going to do timer plus plus, which means add one to timer, so it's counting. And then all the complicated stuff is going to happen inside of draw player. Right now it's uh, pretty simple, but we need to be a little bit smarter about what we're drawing. Okay, so the way I've created this is the timer is going to go in a loop of 60. So if the timer is bigger than 60, we're just going to set timer back to 0. Um, timer, remember, starts at 0. And so it's just going to loop from 0 to 60 over and over and over again. Every time we draw, we add one to it. Uh, and that's all that that is doing. Where did they go? Okay. So the timer goes from 0 to 60. And uh, the animation that we're going to use is based on timer. So um, if the timer is less than 15, we're going to set animate equal to 0. If the timer is, well, OK, so if Uh, 30 is less than timer is less than oh, and timer is less than 45 we're going to set animate equals 2 and actually that should be a else if and else timer equals or sorry animate equals 1 okay so hopefully that's Pretty simple. You might not know what it's doing uh, as far as what the graphics are doing, but you can see that what we're doing is uh, animating. We're just changing the vari variable animate based on timer. So it goes 0 up to 15, and once we hit 15, it's going to go to 1 until you get to 30, and then it goes to 2 until we get to 45, and then it goes to 1, and then we hit 60 or back to 0, it goes to 0. So it's 0, 1, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 1. And for our characters, it's going to be 0, 1, did I get that right? No, sorry. Uh, it's going to be something like 0, 1, 2, 1. 0, 1, 2, 1. Uh, so it's going to look like he's putting his left foot forward, and then his feet come together. Did I say left foot? OK, right foot forward, and then his feet come together, and then his left foot forward, and then his feet come together uh, back and forth. So it will look as if he's walking. Okay, and we also need to keep track of where he's facing. So we actually have graphics for down, right, left, up, but also diagonal down, right, down, left, uh, up, right, and up, left. So uh, because we can go up and right by pressing up, right, or down, left, uh, by pressing down, left, we want to know if we're pressing one or both of those. So if 
right pressed if up pressed. So I'm pressing right, I might be pressing right and up, in which case I need to go diagonal up. And in my case, we're going to set play face equals 18. Um, else if down pressed, we're going to set play face equals 12. And else, we're going to set play face equals 3. So why 18, 12, and 3? Again, it just has to do with uh, the way that this is drawn. So um, we're pressing right. If we press right and up, we want to come all the way to here. Uh, and these coordinates are going to correspond to um, the 18th position over. If we're going right and down, it's only the 12th position over. So, oops. See me jumping around so much. Okay, so this is uh, the 12th position over. He's going down and right. And then if we're just going directly right, it's only the third position over. So here we go, 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, that's why it's 3. So that we can draw the graphics where he's walking to the right. Uh, so the same thing is just going to be the case with all of these. That's right pressed. Um, and then there's if left pressed. Uh, if up pressed also, then we need play face equals 21. If down pressed, play face equals 15. And if, or well, let's say else, play face equals 6. And this should be uh, else if. So that's what happens if you press right, right and up, right and down, or just right, left and up, left and down, or just left. We still need to take care of just down and just up. So if down pressed, oh, we're going to want else ifs here too, because we don't want to do right and down and down. So um, else if left pressed, if neither right nor left, but down is pressed, then we're going to say play face equals zero. Um, and then, because of a screw up in my sprite sheet, uh, you probably won't have to worry about this. We're going to offset the animate a little bit. So we're going to say animate equals animate plus one mod two. Why am I doing that? Uh, it's because the one where he's standing still looking forward is unfortunately in spot number two. Um, if it was in spot number zero, I wouldn't have to do that but I haven't tried messing with this uh, sheet to move this position into the zeroth position. So notice, um, or I guess I wouldn't have to do that if it was here. Uh, and all the other graphics, the part where it looks like their feet are together is in the middle. So their feet are together in the middle here as they're walking right. Um, and then as they're going left, it's in the middle. And it's like that for all positions um, as he's going up. Oh, that's odd. Although it doesn't really matter whenever they're going up as much. But here he's in the second position, so that, that's why this kind of funny offset. Finally, um, else, which means... Oh, no, you have to do... Uh, else if up press. I forgot that one. Uh, play face equals 9. And then finally, else uh, play face equals 2. Animate equals 0. So if you're not pressing any of the keys, we're not doing an animation. And 2 to face forward. Okay, and the way that this works out is uh, we don't want to do 80. Uh, we're going to do 40 times play face plus animate in this x coordinate. So y40 
Well, remember that each of these guys is 40 across. So that's 40, that's 80, that's 120, that's 160. Uh, and they're each width of 40. And uh, these coordinates that I worked out are actually going to grab us the, the way that the player's facing, um, plus animate. So animate, remember, is 0, 1, and 2. So it's going to give us a play face, which might be, for example, 0, and then it's going to add 1 or 2. So it's, um, it's either animate 0, animate 1, animate 2, animate 0, animate 1, animate 2. Here's animate 0, animate 1, animate 2. Uh, this would be play face is 0, play face is 3, play face is 6. And so the play face just goes over to whichever position he's supposed to be facing. Let's give that a shot. And now if you press the keys, it looks like he's walking around based on the animations we drew. Hopefully you found that helpful. I feel like I was flying through this pretty fast. Um, as I said, I'm going to go ahead and put this on my website for now. Uh, the way it's going to be set up is you'll have to create an account to log in and view it. Um, and right now it's going to be exactly this. Uh, hopefully by the time you're watching, it'll be more, because um, I plan on working on this some more. I also plan on not doing the back end in the videos, but showing at least how to do this front end stuff in the videos. All right, if you have questions, please leave them in the comments below. I realize I went through some of this pretty fast. Uh, and feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks.